Hi, I'm Faith Hanna, Zeta 6 Stroke AE4FH, and we're at the very last day of Yoda 2018 where everybody's going home. But we have um, Hans, Zeta 6 Stroke Golf Zero Uniform Papa Lima, and he is a kit builder. So, what have you done for kits at Yoda 2018? Yes, yeah, so um, I've designed the kit for uh, Yota 2018 and a huge amount of work over the last six months. So I designed this uh, 40 meter single sideband transceiver for the Build-A-Thon. So everybody had the opportunity to build one of these, or in many cases start building one of these. They'll have to finish it when they get home. <laughs> so what does that do? So this is a... Uh, yeah, this is a very long list of features. So this is a uh, 40 meter single sideband transceiver kit with a 10 watt linear output, um, but it's all software defined radio, so, but with no PC required. So internally it's a software defined radio. It means all the signal processing is done on board with a powerful 32 bit ARM processor. It doesn't require a PC. The user interface is quite uh, minimal, just uh, two rotary encoders and four buttons. It's designed to be used with the standard type of um, iPhone, Samsung earphones, you know, Android earphones, whatever you have on your cell phone. Um, it also has a slot on the back here for an RJ45 mic uh, plug, so the standard type of uh, Yesu Kenwood style microphone. And it has USB sockets, so the idea is that you'll be able to use, for example, as a USB-A socket and a USB-B socket. And you can, so you can plug in a USB keyboard and you'll be able to use it for PSK31 and RITI and CW on, on the keyboard and the decoding on screen with no PC required. So it'll be a standalone transceiver for those modes. It will also do AM, FM. Um, it has a USB port for connecting to a PC in case you want to use uh, CAT control. And it will appear to uh, the PC as a 24-bit sound card, a high-quality sound card with a radio all built in. So you can use it for digital modes like FT8 and other digital modes as well. So it's not a, it's not a simple kit. You know, there are quite a few uh, components, as you, can, as you can see here. So many of which are already surface, all the surface mount components are already soldered to the board. The through hole components have to be done by the kit constructor. So I'm just trying to, you know, pile in as many features as possible. So it has a real time clock. It's got a space here for a battery so you can have a real time clock. It has uh, CW Kia, iambic Kia built in for CW. It has CW decoder. So a lot of the features were inherited from last year's kit, the QCX CW transceiver. And um, it has all the built-in test equipment for its own alignment of the bandpass filters. And, and so it has a signal generator that it will inject back through the front end and allow you to do the alignment. So the idea is to have a really self-contained radio that also can be constructed without a full lab of test equipment as well. So I think it's going to become very popular. So why did you decide to change from last year's model to this year's? Well, last year's model, so this was designed for the um, Yota 2017 Build-A-Thon in August last year in the UK. And this is just a single band CW transceiver. So for me, the next step, the na next natural step was to do a single sideband transceiver. And so based on a lot of feedback, people want to see that, you know, a, a low cost single sideband transceiver with very good performance something similar concept, you know, very minimal, but very low cost and very high performance. So yeah, it was a logical next step to come to sideband. So maybe possibly next year could be CW and SSB. Oh no, this will do CW and SSB already. So it's got a built-in CW Kia. It has raised cosine envelope shape, very nice. Um, it has a slot here so you can plug a paddle in the back. So it's got an iambic Kia built in. So this will do CW, sideband, AM, FM, all modes. And over the next couple of months, I will also be designing a plug-in filter board so that it will cover 10 bands from 160 meter to 10 meter with 10 watt output and including the 60 meter band in many countries where that's now available. So it'll be a complete all band, all HF, all mode radio transceiver. 
for 10 watts output. And it's small too. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's quite small and a lot of people have commented on that, good for backpacking operations and uh, the aluminium enclosure will be an option, um, an extruded aluminium enclosure. This one looks a bit rough because it's handmade by me <laughs> with my 12 volt Dremel and uh, you know I don't have too many good mechanical skills so I put my 12 volt Dremel in there and then I'm like a sort of human CNC machine, <laughs> drill out the rectangle and then two hours of filing later it looks kind of roughly rectangular like that. So, um, but it'll be factory produced and drilled and punched and with nice uh, labels on the front panel so it'll be it'll be a nice uh, enclosure option for it. So how much would this cost for the people that would really want to make this for themselves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the exact price of it hasn't yet been decided but um, I'm hoping that the single band version which is just 40 meter single side band will cost about $75. When the 10 band filter module is added and the, the aluminium enclosure is added, I'm hoping the entire thing, so all band, all mode, HF radio, with very high performance and all of those features will be somewhere around $150. So it's kind of following in the tradition of all my existing kits, which are very high performance and with tons of features, but very low price. It's kind of the next step in that same tradition. So, I, you know, I really believe that in large parts of the world, um, people can't afford to spend the kind of money on, on really you know, expensive shop-bought radios. And, so, and then they can't easily get components to build their own radios, or they, maybe they don't have the skills or the knowledge to build their own. So hopefully that will, this will change that. Also, you know, for youngsters, in, in many cases, uh, if youngsters who have their own income, they don't necessarily have much income. And so you know, it, amateur radio equipment can be really expensive. And, um, or for youngsters who, are, who don't have their own income and are trying to persuade their parents to buy it for them, <laughs> it obviously gets easier the less they have to ask for, right? So hopefully that will really encourage youngsters in the hobby and uh, encourage the hobby in parts of the world where you know, a $1,000 radio is way too much to buy. Yeah. So how hard is it to build? Well, I mean, there are a lot of parts. Um, there's no surface mount, or well, all the surface mount that's in there necessarily because many packages such as the 32-bit ARM processor are only available in surface mount, but all of that has already been pre-soldered by the factory. So all of the rest of it is true whole components. In parts of the board it's, it's quite dense, for example the power amplifier is um, here, that, that's quite densely populated, but it has to be to keep the uh, lead lengths small, otherwise you lose the performance as you go up in frequency or you get instability. I would say Anybody can build this, but the people who have less experience, less construction experience, should really take it step by step. So the assembly manual, you've seen it, the, the assembly manual was 90 pages, and it contains a step for every single component or set of components that you have to install, and is very, very clearly explained. So in many ways, I think you know, people with less experience with construction will actually have a better chance at it. And the reason is because Often people who have experience, they skip the steps or they don't read all the instructions or they think they can just look at the schematic and they can just put components here and there. And so even in this kit build-a-thon, you know, we saw quite a few people who said, oh, I've got plenty of experience constructing, this is no problem. And they got quite humbled by, the, you know, the experience. They put something in backwards or they didn't read properly. And then there were people who had much less experienced, but were very, very methodical about it and took their time to read the instructions and look at the diagrams and the pictures and really make sure every component was correct before soldering it. And, and they had great success. And um, it, some, some of them even finished every component of the kit and it was completely, completely finished. Others of them have taken home a half-built kit and they will finish it when they get home. So, you know, I wouldn't say it's an easy kit to build. There are a lot of parts, but I think somebody who's methodical and goes through it carefully, anybody can build it. Yeah, and I did realize that most kits for pretty much anything, the instructions are either just schematics or it's like place whatever the name of part is in whichever designated hole. Yeah. But it doesn't say if it has to go a certain direction. Right, yes. That's important. So yeah, there are, there are quite a large number of components like the electrolytic capacitors, diodes, 
transistors, the ICs, all of those have to be in the right direction. So I do, yeah, I do emphasize that at every single step where that type of component is required, that it has to go in the right way. Despite that, you know, some people still make a mistake and put it in the other way, but you can't do anything about that. You just try and highlight, highlight it to people, yeah. So it doesn't, the assembly manual doesn't assume anything. So as, when it comes to diodes, it says, you know, this diode has a black stripe and that has to line up with that line on the PCB and then it shows a picture. It doesn't assume anything about your previous construction experience. So it's intended for everyone to be able to build it, but you would need patience if you were a newcomer to construction. Yes. And even if you're just slow, but you've done it before. Yeah, if you're, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of parts, but the result will be, I think, really well worth it because it's a really high performance radio. Um, I'm using a 12-bit, sorry, a 24-bit analog to digital converter chip with really high dynamic range and a 24-bit digital to analog converter chip on the output um, from the SDR. Big heat sink here on the back, so with things like FT8, which are continuous duty cycle modes, um, it shouldn't overheat the heat sink. So I think uh, for somebody who puts the effort and reads the instructions carefully, it'll be really well worth it um, produce a really high performance radio at low cost. Yeah. Plus it's also fun for just those people that love kits. Yeah, there are a lot of people who just love building kits, yeah, yeah, and um, don't necessarily even care about operating them, they just like to build, and uh, yeah. so it's a lot of fun. When you see it the way it sort of goes together and everything fits nicely together, um, it, it's, it's really nice. And the way that the front buttons and controls are all designed to, to be the right height to fit the panel, um, it, it's a quite nice mechanical design as well as hardware design. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else you would like to say about any of your kits? Um, I mean, yeah, we have, I have, I think, something like 20 different kits now. So it started off, the, the legacy kit was the Ultimate 3S, which was a, a Whisper Beacon transmitter kit. But then that evolved into a whole series of modules which people can plug together and use in different ways or they can use in their own homebrew projects. For example, you know, a low-pass filter module or a synthesizer module for the oscillators. So all of those modules, I've got a, a GPS kit module, a receiver module, a five watt class C power amplifier module, a shack clock. The, the big one that's the big seller at the moment is the um, CW transceiver kit. Uh, and here it is in a sort of uh, German designed and produced case. So this CW transceiver kit is 5 watts single band CW. Again, very high performance. It's not SDR, it's uh, all analog radio. But this, is, this was the kit for the 2017 Yota. They built a 17 meter version at the RSGB hosted event last year. And it has gone on now in less than a year to sell 5,500, just over 5,500 kits in just under a year. So this has become a real classic. And, uh, it's still very, very popular, and I get great feedback on it from people who are, you know, it's small enough they can use it on soter activations, trail, trail, and, and so on, as well as in the shack. So this is a, a very successful. Yeah. So I think that's it for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I hope you have a flight back, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, the Yota 2018. And I certainly I have. Yeah, it was Thank a lot you. of fun. <laughs> 73.